Scales are often seen as very contentious, whether it's because they're very much associated with exams or whether it's the compulsory sense of you've got to do scales. It's unfortunate that that causes almost a barrier into realising the usefulness, the importance, the value of scales. In starting this series on scales, which is to run throughout the month of November 2022, together with my Samic Music learning partners Chris Jolly and Paul Harris, my pitch on scales I have titled Finding the Sense in Scales. Sight can for all of us, particularly when an instrument is in hand, distract attention away from active listening. I have therefore deliberately chosen the sense of hearing over sight to deliver what in essence is perhaps more of a podcast. Management of the five senses might appear beyond the need for scrutiny and therefore assigned to the intuitive in our daily lives. In the context of training in musical learning, greater awareness must be considered in selecting which sense in a single note manoeuvre might make the best sense. Playing on the dual meaning of the word sense, I would like you to strip away other people's persuasive words, including mine, from your head. Press the erase button. Trust me, this might take a bit of time. If you'll forgive a slight crude analogy, but like feeling you've brushed the last crumb from your teeth before embarking on a training session, my preferred word, which far more reflects all we do in our learning and training sessions than the word practice. Now, press the reset button and start exploring your reasons to find your sense in scales. Not just their benefits, one important and relevant. This will only draw you back into the sales pitch heard from others. It must be your reason. Despite the degree to which you would rate your feelings about scales, and even if that degree stretches to your having convinced yourself you can do without scales, if I may offer a health analogy. It's not obligatory to eat fresh fruit or vegetables or to have some fitness training program, however short in your own home, as I now do since Covid and latterly a house move made swimming and gym not currently feasible. You can survive without scales, just like you can survive without making a healthy diet choices or incorporating a daily training exercise routine. The question must be, to what degree? Scales are your green veg, your sit-ups, touch your toes. Scales will undeniably make you a healthier player and a more accomplished and confident musician. While I'm not here to preach about healthy eating or embracing physical exercises into your daily routine, but purely using as an example to which scales directly relate. As you might be struggling to get beyond your resistance and reluctance to engage with scales, or even if I'm preaching to the converted, to make real sense of scales, and by that I mean gain the greatest value and benefit from playing scales. The primary sense of playing scales is not simply to play them correctly. Shock! Horror! Okay, let me explain. The sense in playing scales is to engage the senses. Forgive me for going back to the food analogy, but do you eat simply to put food in your stomach and therefore gobble down your food? Or do you eat with an awareness to the taste, texture and smell of what you are consuming? Watching a chef 
sample a source to check the balance of ingredients with a sense of awareness of the process by which the source was made will make the desired outcome objective a greater certainty. If adjustments have to be made because there was awareness throughout the process, a sense of understanding to where those adjustments need to be made will be clearer. The sense in playing scales is to engage with the senses. Hearing, the tone quality of sound when slurred, staccato or legato tongued, intonation, tonal control in the chosen dynamic. Then there is the touch, which for a wind player will be embouchure, lip pressure, oral facial muscles. Added to the awareness of touch, there will also be breath, fingerings, finger weight, shape. While for a keyboard percussion or string player who have the potential to see what they are doing, wind players have at best a very restricted view in seeing what we are doing. So we must develop our sixth sense in a very, very deliberate way, as indeed all accomplished musicians will ultimately do, irrespective of their instrument, and develop spatial awareness to hone their sixth sense to ensure their fingers are placed with reliability. Visual attention has less relevance in the context of scales. Having a lifelong dislike of scale books as a young player, I quickly dismiss them as confusing and detrimental to my learning. Frankly, they put me off wanting to learn scales. I have, during a lifetime of teaching and coaching, continue to feel that at least for woodwind players, scale books look scary and act as a barrier to really making sense of scales and learning music theory. Where the visual sense plays an important part is where you are looking. As professor of clarinet and saxophone for the Royal Military, my duties extended to coaching woodwind and brass players who were struggling to retain their scales, particularly as pressures increased as proximity to their exam became closer. Their successfully passing out into their band relied on their passing their exam. Secure employment, expectations from senior personnel, never mind peer pressure, intense stuff. The effects of, I must get it right, I have seen in a broad variety of contexts, even from my time as a grade examiner. I must get it right is like saying, I want to run faster. It is nonsensical rather than applying constructive, sensible measures. Awareness to the visual sense by training the eyes to find a spot straight ahead or just below the direct eye line resulted in greater stability. I used to watch those who either close their eyes, look towards the top corner of the room or whose eyes wandered erratically around the room. Those players, as well as the players who closed their eyes, displayed the poorest and least secure scale skills and in turn displayed the greatest physical and emotional anxieties. While smell and taste might not seem to make sense as being included in the process of playing scales, Smell and taste can be a cause of distraction. The metallic taste in the mouth will result from a high pressure event, which the body's natural responses perceives as triggering a threat. These include the adrenaline gland secreting hormones to regulate the stress caused by those high pressure events, including playing scales in front of a teacher or in an exam. Many listening will have experienced the feeling of an adrenaline rush with heart pumping. Not only will the heart be pumping, but the stomach will also feel unsettled and certainly for me, fingers feeling very cold. 
all the senses will become more acute, including smell. From a research angle, this is incredibly interesting, but from a practical standpoint, extremely distressing and distracting. If you know the cause and are prepared for the effect, your fear will be replaced with a sense of familiarity and thereby pose less of a threat to you and in turn your task focus. Wherever you are in your relationship with scales, even those who need to start by making a truce with scales, regardless of age, level, experience, amateur or professional, embarking on a journey which embraces a process will enrich your experience of what scales have to offer you. The training of the brain to efficiently retrieve and process knowledge for practical use. Negotiating the best sense in that split second is all part of the fantastic discoveries you will make in a lifelong learning and training journey, playing scales mindfully and recognise their transferable benefits in all you strive to accomplish in your pursuit of musical excellence. It is from finding the sense in playing scales that playing scales will make sense. Thank you.